what's up guys welcome again in this video we will see how to pass automated orders using python and you may already know this is a very powerful tool especially if you are building a machine learning technical indicator that is capable of predicting within a good accuracy the future price trends we also see how to send email notifications for any alerts or executed buying or selling orders so in brief, while observing the market, the program will let you know of any executed operations by sending you an email. In our previous videos, we saw how to install the Anaconda environment that we are using, the Jupyter Notebook and a specific technical analysis package called the Pandas TA for technical analysis. In the second video, we saw how to download the price data from online resources and how to calculate technical indicators and append these to our prices data, all in the form of a pandas data frame. Then in the third video, we saw how to fit a machine learning model using our data and how to predict future trends. We used the K nearest neighbors and the XJ boost, meaning the X gradient boost classifiers. In this video, we will see how to save an already trained model because sometimes training models on a large amount of data might be time consuming. So you might need to save your trained model for later use. We will also see how to load a saved model, how to use the model to come up with uh, predictions. And according to our model's advice, combined with our trading strategy, the program will execute orders automatically and it will send you email notifications of the recently executed orders. So first let's check out how to save and load a trained machine learning model. We start by importing the joblib module. Then I have to specify a file name and I will use the dump function to store my model data here using the file name that I already specified. So after doing this, at this stage, you might close your program, your model will be saved on the hard drive. You might also copy it and send it to someone else to be used if you want to. Uh, you, you get the idea, the model is safe in a file somewhere on your hard drive. To load the model, we can use the joblib load function. And obviously you need to provide the name of the file containing your model here. So our model is already trained in previous episodes. So now it's just about using the model and executing the orders. Um, you get the idea here. We just saved a model that we already trained and then we loaded the model. And now I will just jump to using our model for live automated orders with email notifications. Now, since we used a four hour bars data, I want to schedule my program to probe the market once every four hours, meaning at the end of each new candlestick. Therefore, we will need a scheduler and we will need to import these packages and functions to interact with the Oanda API. This video is not sponsored by Oanda, nor am I advertising their platform here. It simply uh, happened that I was using their interface. You might also try different brokers with different platforms. As long as the broker provides a Python API, you can communicate with the market and do what we are doing in this video. All what you see here are modules that are related to the Oanda platform, the Oanda interface. And this one here, the SMTP lib, it's a module that would allow me to communicate via emails, meaning sending emails. So I will import the SMTP lib for email communications and we will provide a valid email and the password to give Python access. Then we have the sent from address and the destination email. Here I usually use the same address, so you'll only need one email address and then I sync this email on my phone so I get a beep notification if my program is sending me an alert. Finally, the title of the subject of the email, you can include it here. So I use just info about the Swiss franc uh, trading. Okay, so now we will declare a model prediction variable for the moment. It will be simply equal to zero. We will define a function here. I will call it some job function. It doesn't take any parameters in here. First, we will need an account access token, what we call an access token for your uh, account. This you will get from your uh, interface, from your broker's platform. 
You can generate it and simply copy the serial number right here between those two double quotes. Then we will define a collector variable. It will be our candlestick collector. The function takes the access token, the trading pair symbol, and the time scale. Here I specify the four hours candlesticks. Then I will use the collector to apply the grab function and grab the last number of bars. Here I used twice 161, so we are grabbing the last 322 bars. At this point, you have to pay attention to your technical indicators and check how many bars you need for your calculations. For example, if you are using a moving average of 160 bars, then you should grab at least 160 bars. Same thing for the RSI, our model needs 20 bars for the RSI and we have to make sure that these are available. Okay, now I will create a pandas data frame and I will call it DF stream. It has four columns, the open, the close, the high and the low prices. And then I will copy each candle values, the open, close, high and low prices into my data frame, casting these values from string to float. And for some reason, I had to specify the floating type of each column of my data frame. Now, if you have watched my previous videos, we took into account few technical indicators like the mid price of bars, the 40, 80 and 160 bars moving averages. So here we are calculating these indicators for the recently downloaded candlesticks. We can also calculate these using the pandas underscore TA. Uh, functions, I mean the, uh, the package called pandas technical indicators and it's somehow easier you don't have to use the rolling function and so on so uh, it's all done uh, using the, the functions of the module. We also need the ADR for the last 20 bars, the RSI which takes by default the last 14 bars and the mid price for each bar. Additionally, our model will need the slopes of the moving averages, the mid price values and the RSI taking into account the last six values of each, just like we did in the previous videos. And now that we have all this updated price data, I will select the last closed candlestick, not the one that just opened. This one is recent and not established yet. The price is still moving and we are only certain of its opening price. So remember, I just downloaded the last 322 bars up here. And I don't want the last bar, but the one before which is already closed. And this bar has the index 320. So I will copy all its technical features into my x underscore uh, model variable and I will feed those to my machine learning as an input and the model will provide me with its future trend prediction which I will store in my variable called model prediction. The model will provide me with a category information. The number zero will mean that the trend is not clear for the model. If the model provides me the number one then the trend is down. If the model will give it two, then it means that the trend is up. And according to these predictions, we will be either selling or uh, buying uh, a currency. Then I will connect to Gmail, I log in to the provided email using the credentials, and I will send myself an email containing the prediction of my model. You may have noticed this will send me an email every four hours. If you don't want to be bothered by your automated trading by that much, you can put a condition and send email only in case of a known trend or even only in case the program has executed an order. So to execute orders, we have to provide the ID number of the account you want to use for your trading and the API access token. Then we will grab the most recent candlestick opening value, which is also the closing value of the previous candlestick, at least in most of the cases. And we can specify our take profit and stop loss prices in case we are buying and in case we are selling. As you can see, we take the open price of the current candlestick and we add our pip difference. Here it's 500 pips 
and for the stop loss we will subtract from the current price half the uh, take profit difference meaning 250 pips we do this because our strategy uses a 2 to 1 profit risk ratio in other words every winning trade makes up for two losing trades you may of course change these values as you prefer if you uh, have a different plan in mind and the same procedure is used also for the selling take profit and stop loss values now for passing orders if the model prediction variable is one this means the predicted trend is down and we can use the market order request function to specify our instrument the us dollar via the uh, swiss franc the number of units to buy and the take profit and stop loss values then we create the order from our account by calling the function order create and providing the account id and the market order request data and finally we call the client function request and your order is normally executed in the opposite direction if you have an uptrend prediction you have to buy and the units number provided for the market order request is in this case uh, positive since we are buying and this is the only difference between selling and buying orders for selling orders you provide a negative number of units and for buying orders you provide a positive number of units if you print the request function return value you'll get a message if things went correctly and the other and if the order was executed without problems now all of this part was included in the function some job so this function is to be executed according to a schedule which also depends on the time scale of your bar charts here in our case we want to probe the market every four hours so we will define a scheduler using the blocking scheduler uh, it's a function and i will allow a misfire grace time of around 15 minutes why because in case you have a connection issue or for some reason the order is not executed this is the maximum time for the job execution to be allowed to uh, delay before it is considered a misfire so the program will keep the function running up to 15 minutes in this case if no orders are executed then this is considered a misfire and we will simply wait or the program will simply wait for the next candlestick in four hours then we will use the add underscore job function we will provide the sum underscore job function uh, the name of the function the day of the week parameter from monday till friday since the market is closed on weekends our parameter is equal to star divided by four which means every four hours with a delay of five minutes remember we need to give the program some time to download the recent candlesticks data calculate the technical indicators and launch the model prediction so i also added a jitter of 120 seconds so my orders are not executed exactly at the same time but with a random jitter of two minutes you can skip this one if you like and last you can uh, provide the time zone you're in you can find a list of the time zones online on any related website and basically that's it you call the start function of your schedule uh, you let your program run and this is it your trading bot is uh, is running you can run your bots on demo accounts and see how the outcome if it's a winning bot or a losing bot you can run this during a month or two or so however you will have to leave your program running and connected all the time this might be inconvenient for you there are other solutions like running a small cloud server or something like that i'll stop here for this video i hope you guys found this information helpful good luck to you in your trading and see you next time